Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Cementation of a fixed restoration is one of the last steps in the long series of stages in the fabrication of a bridge for a patient. This last step, cementation, is a rather critical one in that if the cement is abused or if the cementation procedure is not done correctly, there are several problems that can result. One of the most obvious problems is having a cement line by not getting the bridge down far enough or perhaps uh, having a margin open. Dentists and dental students are misled into the feeling that a cement line is okay because the void is closed now by cement. But what happens is that the cement will eventually dissolve and wash out. And what happens is that, number one, plaque is collected in this area. And you can see in this particular slide that this causes irritation to the gingival tissue and recession. Also, the plaque that collected in this void uh, caused recurrent caries, and now this particular uh, restoration has to be lost because there is recurrent caries into the pulp tissue, and root canal has to be done. Some of the other problems that can occur are that if the crown or restoration is not seated properly, it'll be high in occlusion, and this can cause traumatic occlusion and all the problems that result from this malady. Also, if the cement is not handled properly and it has acid properties and the pulp is not protected, there can be irritation to the pulp, pulp death, and subsequent loss of the tooth. First, let us classify the various cements into groups. The first uh, type of cements I'd like to talk about are the temporary cements that are used for temporarily cementing permanent restorations. Now, there are many indications for temporarily cementing a permanent restoration. The first one is to check the occlusion on complicated bridge work. You can have the patient wear the bridge or the crown. Uh, you can sandblast the occlusal surfaces, and they can wear this so you can uh, check after a couple of days how they're getting along with the occlusion. If you sandblast the occlusal surface, you can pick up the movements that, that the mandible goes through. You can pick up areas of parafunction or bruxism. Another important area is to temporarily cement anterior bridge work with either plastic or porcelain facings to check the shade. Very often the uh, patient would like to show this particular bridge to their parents or their wives or friends and once it's cemented permanently there is no way of removing it. If it's cemented temporarily they can wear it home, they can check it under the lighting conditions at home, and if there are some changes to be made, this can be removed very easily. One of the other things to consider is that uh, very often the, during the cementation procedures when the teeth are dried, the adjacent teeth will dehydrate and they will be much lighter than they are normally. And when you first cement the bridge or put the bridge in, it may not quite match the anterior teeth, but eventually as the teeth moisten, it will match very nicely. One of the other reasons for temporarily cementing a permanent restoration is that we would like very often to check the pontic or ridge relationship or the relationship of soft tissue that may have been irritated from the temporary crowns. And this will give us a chance to evaluate this over a week's period of time, for example, while the patient wears it and uh, goes through their oral hygiene regimen. I'd like to show you some of the cements that are available and to discuss some of their advantages. There are two of them that we use, ZOE 200 and the Apatow Trial Cement. These uh, products are designed so that they have a specific strength. A lot of dentists like to take a regular mix of zinc oxide eugenol and perhaps add uh, a little bit of Vaseline or make a very weak mix, but there is no controlled strength when you do this, and very often and more than we'd like to admit, we will temporarily cement a permanent restoration and find that it really is permanently cemented because we can't get it off. These two materials have controlled strength, and the ZOE 200 has a crushing strength of 200. We know that we'll be able to get that restoration off. The Apatel trial 
is uh, a rubber-like material that forms a gasket, more or less, around the uh, restoration and seals it for the uh, patient to wear the restoration temporarily. The third method is, as I mentioned before, making a thin mix of irregular zinc oxide, eugenol cement, or adding Vaseline. The problem with this is that there is no controlled strength. A fourth method is to just use Vaseline, and this is helpful when there has been some drifting of abutment teeth, and we'd like to realign these abutment teeth, so we will temporarily seed it with Vaseline so that the bridge can drift back into its proper position. If you use a temporary cement, the temporary cement will hold the space and there will be no drifting. Now I'd like to talk about permanent cements. Permanent cements can be classified into many groups. Uh, I would like to talk about the mechanism that the cements use to get the locking of the restoration on the tooth itself. The mechanism of most permanent cements is that the cement acts as a keying or a looting agent between the gold, as you see here on the slide, and the tooth structure, the roughnesses in the tooth and the roughnesses in the gold. And the cement acts as a keying or a lock. There are some cements that have slight adhesive qualities, but these adhesive qualities are very minor in comparison to the keying or locking effect. Now I'd like to talk about the zinc phosphate cements. The zinc phosphate cements are rather strong. They have a crushing strength of 13 to 14,000 pounds. They, however, are acid, and they tend to irritate the pulp. So it's necessary to varnish the, the teeth before you use these zinc phosphate uh, cements. They are mildly soluble in saliva. They have relatively long working times, and if you have complicated fixed bridge work to, uh, uh, to cement and you uh, want to have some long working time, you can cool the slab and you can mix a 10-drop mix rather than a 7-drop mix and have uh, extended working time to allow you to cement complicated restorations. Uh, it also comes in various shades, and the flex and also tenacin uh, will uh, is available in various shades that can be used to cement facings and uh, anterior felspathic porcelain jackets. You can use this material then to change the shade of these restorations that the cement would affect the color of the final restoration. The next group of cements I'd like to talk about are the zinc oxide eugenol cements. These most of them are reinforced with alumina and have ethoxy benzoic acid added to them to give them strength. The, uh, the first one does not have the alumina, and this is final cement. It is a rather weak cement and has a strength of around 7,000. The other uh, zinc oxide eugenol cements with the alumina added uh, have a little more strength, and they are in the range of 10,000 as far as the strength is concerned. These cements do have a little less solubility in saliva, and, that, and they have a much shorter working time than the zinc phosphate cements. They, however, do not need varnish, and they do have some abundant effects on the pulp, and they uh, seem to sedate the pulp when the bridge or crown is cemented with this material. It is rather difficult to clean off of the restorations, and it's wise when using this material to Vaseline or lubricate the crown or bridges when we're using this material. The next group of materials I like to talk about are the polycarboxylates. The polycarboxylates are a new breed of cements, and they are really acid in nature, but the, the chain of these materials, the molecular chain, is so long that it does not get down the dental tubules, and so the net effect of the acidity is more or less a neutral pH. The, uh, the polycarboxylates have a little shorter working time than the zinc phosphate cements. The Duralon is around two to three minutes. The PCA cement may be as long as five minutes as far as the working time. They are strong. They have a strength of between 10 and 11,000 pounds. However, uh, there is some evidence that there is some adhesion to the enamel 
around 500 pounds, and maybe to Denton, 50 to 100 pounds. This is rather insignificant as far as the overall uh, strength is concerned. They are also stringy when you tend to work with them and they tend to string away from the margins. In a recent study by Fairhurst, it was shown that there is some adhesion of the polycarboxylates to gold alloy. This may add something to their strength also. Now, the next group of cements I would like to demonstrate are the methacrylate cements. These are divided into two groups, the methyl methacrylates, cements such as grip cement that are used to cement acrylic jackets, uh, used to cement acrylic facings. These cements have uh, somewhat limited use and are not used for permanent restorations very much in crown and bridge procedures. The dimethacrylate cements, or what is properly, uh, popularly known as epoxylite, uh, is a cement that has some adhesion to enamel, and an agent such as phosphoric acid is used to etch the enamel, and then these materials uh, tend to adhere to this. These are like composite cements without the filler, or they are like the Fisher sealants. Uh, most of the restorations that we do, however, are in Denton, and it's questionable whether the large claims that the manufacturers make about this material are really true when this material is used on Denton. Another group of cements that uh, I think are worth talking about are the cyanoacrylates. Bascar did a study with isobutyl uh, cyanoacrylate and showed that it was kind to the pulp and soft tissue. One of the uh, pin kits that are currently uh, available is the Elman pin kit, and here they are using a cyanoacrylate cement to cement pins in uh, for uh, pin cores. One of the problems is that they are using an alpha cyanoacrylate, which is different than the uh, other that Bascar used, and there is really no histological evidence that this uh, cyanoacrylate is kind to pulp tissues. And until further histological studies can be done, uh, it is a questionable procedure to use this with vital teeth. The cyanoacrylates are also soluble in saliva. The last group of cements are the silicophosphates. Silicophosphates can be used to cement jackets. They come in various shades. They do have uh, some fluoride in them, and this is an inhibitor as far as carries is concerned. They are highly acidic, and they, you have to use a varnish with these materials. Now I would like to talk about cementing procedures. It's very important in the cementing procedures that we uh, isolate the area, keep the saliva away. Very often we will medicate the patient with banthine bromide to keep the saliva from flowing. And you notice here we are applying a cement to the abutment teeth. We are using the zinc oxide eugenol cement here. Uh, it, the working time is rather short, so you can't dilly or dally. You have to move and get the, make sure that you get the bridge completely down when you are seating it. Here we are using an orange wood stick to drive the bridge down, rocking it from buckle to lingual to make sure that it seats. Another procedure is using a uh, mail pack or a vibrator of some sort to vibrate this bridge down. You have to be careful on what kind of restorations you have on the opposing teeth because you can possibly fracture uh, those maxillary teeth in trying to seat the lower bridge. While there still is a little bit of working time, uh, it gives us an opportunity to burnish the margins. The hydraulic action of the cement oozing out of those margins tends to open them up. And at this time, before the cement sets, we will try to burnish the margins. In cementing pin restorations, there are some other considerations. If we're using zinc phosphate cement, we should varnish the pin holes with paper points uh, because these are acid in nature. If we're using zinc oxide eugenol, as we are in this particular case, uh, we don't have to varnish the pin holes. You notice we're using a spiral lentulo, and we're not using the full length. We cut the spiral off so there are only five or four twists left to the instrument. This will help us spin the cement down the uh, canal. Uh, we also uh, sometimes will flatten the pin so that the uh, metal will not show through on thin incisors. We do the same thing on root canals so that the cement can easily come out of the pin holes. Sometimes uh, we will even, uh, on orthodontic cases or perial cases, we will even tie the teeth and pull them into the casting when the teeth are very mobile. 
it's very important to uh, move very quickly on the situation because the cements do set up rapidly. Make sure that you get the bridge all the way down. And then at this time, it's very important to burnish the margins because, as we mentioned before, the hydraulic pressure of the cement coming out of the margins tends to open them up slightly. So in this case, we will have the patient close on an orange wood stick, and then we will try to get to all the available margins with sand disks, with a burnisher, to make sure that these margins are finished in properly. You have to be careful, on, especially on portion fused to gold restorations, how you apply pressure. In a situation where there's gold on a lingual surface, we can apply a little more pressure to seat the bridge completely using a rocking motion until no more cement comes out from under the margins. This will assure us that the bridge is seated completely and that we have decent occlusion. Have the patient help by closing down and hold the bridge while you do the final finishing and burnishing procedures. Sometimes in anterior situations we will opaque the castings or use cements that have different shades to influence the overall color of the final bridge. It is a fallacy to think that a cement will give retention to a poor preparation or an ill-fitting casting because essentially cements are still only looting agents. However, if we have a retentive preparation, a good fitting casting with decent occlusion, it really makes little difference what cement you use. Now it's up to you to collect all the data and use that computer between your two ears to figure out what will be the best cement for each individual situation. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.